All right, demonstration for uh, today will, first part will be a class three preparation. I'll be doing on tooth number nine. Uh, and I'll be doing this uh, because I can without a rubber dam and uh, I'll be doing direct vision just for purposes of the camera. Uh, you'll essentially, so I'm going to be coming pretty much from a straightforward angle like this. So I'm looking directly at the tooth kind of like this. Um, but you guys will be doing it from kind of this angle right here. It's hard to see. You'll be coming in and uh, prepping out from basically like this. So we'll be doing a, uh, a DO on number nine. The first thing that we do is, and remember, uh, this is straight from the book, uh, the incisal gingival, I can show you a point to it, the incisal gingival is two millimeters, uh, the facial lingual depth is 1.5, and then the axial depth is uh, 0.2 millimeters into dentin, and so we'll kind of be simulating that a little bit, Let's see if I can find a sharpie real quick maybe. So I'll kind of show you where we'll be prepping into. It'll be about about like that right there. And you want to go just uh, apical or gingival to the contact because uh, that's where most of these lesions start out at. So I'll go ahead and we'll try to do this the best we can with the camera. Um, but I'll come in here and go ahead and start making a, at a 45 degree angle. Man, this is going to be hard to do with the camera. Maybe we can rotate a little bit like this. So we'll come in here, and this is this is a 245, but it basically simulates a uh, quarter round burr. We'll go in, basically just to open up. start getting our outline going. So you kind of just open up and that's just to get some space in there for like your 330. Which I'll use now. There's some chocolate. Thank you. So holding the burr perpendicular to, I guess, kind of the long axis of the tooth here. Drop down, start working on our outline. Kind of a C-shaped outline there. And essentially all you have to do, think of it like a class one, but we're missing, instead of having a wall here, there's nothing there on the uh, distal. So we keep dropping the depth. I'm keeping off of this tooth as much as possible. I'm actually leaving a little bit of a shell here on the very distal portion of the preparation. That I can break later with a hand instrument. You can kind of see how we're going so far. This might be the easiest way to shoot this on the camera because really I, I'm so used to using a mirror 
but it's hard to do it in direct vision actually. So right now we can see we're probably a little long here. This is probably closer to three millimeters. But the axial depth is okay. That might be a little long too. And then our depth here is probably about one. If I had to eyeball it, we want to just barely break contact here. And so what I'll do is I'll drop down a little bit in the safe portion of the prep. And then I'll use a hand instrument to break off and break the uh, contact. here kind of scrape off some of this and I can see one thing that you can try to do is if you have any wedges uh, yet and you don't want to nick the adjacent tooth is that you can put a wedge in here like so and that'll very very gently break the contact for you kind very slightly so you can go back in there and have a little bit more wiggle room And if you want to check, if you need to check, for example, like your, you take the wedge out and then you can check for clearance. And we're looking for pretty much 0.5, I think, on the clearance is what we want here. Uh, we want to see a little bit of daylight peeking through right there. So you can see we're probably almost close enough. You say, well, John, how do I check for clearance? And you can do that with a uh, IPC. The IPC is 0.5. So that's one way to check to see if you have clearance. Uh, and I'll get that out here in a second. The camera's actually sitting on top of my cassette. But I'll check that here in a second. It's just so hard to position this camera correctly so that you can see, because the head of the handpiece is getting in the way.
So I'll smooth up a little bit here. Okay, and you can kind of see now the important thing is to have a 90 degree exit angle here and then have a uh, the, the gingival exit angle uh, needs to be as 90 as possible but we're going to put a bevel on these surfaces uh, because these are all going to be in enamel so we can and we're going to bevel the gingival um, exit angle as well so I'm going to lift up the camera real quick sit down here get some instruments out my trusty IPC and some of my hand instruments if I can find them Rio probe mirror because why not and then maybe I'll use a Holland back one of my hand instruments here Okay, so let's use the IPC to check for clearance. See, it's a little tight down there, gingival. Check it here. It's pretty much just about good on the facial clearance. This is how you check. As you go in here, and you use the instrument, and you just kind of sweep it through, see if you can get it through. And since since I'm having it, getting it hung up a little bit, it's not quite there yet. So um, what I'm going to do is actually go in here with the Holland back a little bit, try to see if I can scrape a little bit off here. And then I'll go back in with the 330. See if I can open up a little bit here. Okay, let's see how that turns out. These are hard preps to do, but doubly so. With the camera going, you'll have to forgive me. My angles are a little weird doing this thing. Uh, but we'll do the best we can. So let's check back here with the IPC. Okay, that pretty well slides through. Slides through on the facial. And it's a little tight there, but I can get it through there on the incisal. So that's, now we've got the pretty much the outline done. We need to do some things to uh, smooth things up. So the first thing is the enamel bevel. We'll place that with a either a 7404, or you can, you can use uh, one of these burrs here. This is a kind of a nice bird to use. This one here, this is a football diamond. It's used for crown preparations, but we'll do what we uh, have done so far, and that's to use the 7404. So to get a nice enamel bevel in, we'll place the hand piece, place the burr on the tooth, and then we'll just kind of go in a circle here and it's it's yeah it's just so hard to show on the camera but do the best we can it's about a 0.5 to a millimeter bevel 45 degrees 
You can come from the gingival And then in order to uh, get a little bit of a bevel down at that gingival exit angle, it's going to be really tough, but you can usually get in there with like a 201.3, come at it kind of from this angle here. I know it's really hard to see. So much easier working on mandibular teeth, I'll tell you. Because they're just the angle that I have to hold the camera and all that. So we'll come in here and basically very lightly dust. To get that exit angle there and as far as I'm aware of we don't need to bevel up here this just needs to be a 90 degree exit so you can kind of see let me wipe this off cleaned up you can see pretty much uh, we're there and if you need to oh I need to fix one thing though there's kind of a step in the preparation You can see it. I can see it on the camera. It's right at the axial portion of the prep. So something like that. Let's do some measurements with our Perio probe. So it's a lit right at three. The book says uh, two millimeters and in size of gingival, but the the point is is to just be kind of in the middle of the contact. And my type of dot teeth kind of had diastomae in them, but it, the point is to be right in the middle of the contact when you break up here. You want 0.5 clearance on the facial, and then you want to have 0.5 clearance on the gingival. So it, I remember when I was taking the class, they told us that because the contact is kind of long on these teeth, uh, you'll essentially, you'll have a little bit of a longer prep uh, in size of gingivally. If we were to measure here, it's kind of hard to say where the quote dentin is on these type of dent teeth. Uh, but you know, about 1.5 maybe to 2 axial depth uh, and then the uh, facial depth right around yeah 1.5 to 2 I, I can actually see again you know you have to look at it with the mirror from every which way it's hard for me to do this on the camera like I said but there's a little bit of a, of a step again up here towards the incisal. So it's kind of what you want. It's something that looks a little bit like that. Now mine's not perfect, just once again because the angle I had to come in. You can kind of see what we want with that bevel too. Now the bevel is this area here instead of having a stark 90 degree exit we come off and we take about a 40 we have 45 degrees of enamel uh, that's been exposed there so anyway uh, we'll get it uh, the uh, fill video here in a couple minutes